I started on this journey a couple of years ago, and it continues to unfold and evolve uh, as I grow and evolve. And what I wanted to do is take a little bit of time this morning and tell you about me and <coughs> about what I'm calling my journey. Is it okay with everyone that I peel back the curtains a little bit and just kind of take you inside my world? Thank you. First of all, Adam Casillas, I want to thank you for hosting this event every single week, 52 weeks a year. Um, you are a mensch. You are uh, a, a person in this community who I respect and admire for what you've done, for the influence that you've had. And I can't thank you enough for giving me and everyone who joined you every Monday morning uh, and throughout the year. Um, an opportunity to be able to uh, to share and network and, uh, and come together as individuals. Thank you. Thank you. And also thank you to Tomas Cafe uh, for allowing us to take this space and uh, and make this an integral part of their business. I know we give them it's a it's a um, quid pro quo. Uh, it's a it's a give to get and uh, and we're all part of this community. So uh, I want to thank you uh, right from the top for doing that too. Okay. But um, this is. What I'm gently, gently calling my journey of a thousand miles, because as you'll see, it's actually about a thousand miles. Uh, maybe a little bit more because I'm cheating. Um, but this is about the lessons that I've learned along the way, and hopefully through my story I can share and maybe uh, inspire you a little bit to think about what your story is and be able to take some things uh, into your life uh, and, uh, and do a little bit, a little bit closer examination as, as it goes along. Um, I've always paid tribute to the past. Um, you may have heard this phrase about standing on the shoulders of the ones who came before you. Um, it's written for thousands of years. And uh, I definitely want to, as you'll see, um, pay tribute to my past and where I came from. And also be able to live in the present. And that's something that's very important to me and why I'm here and what I'm doing. And if you understand the foundation, maybe you understand a little bit more about it along the way. Um, these are those folks that made this all possible. I was reading uh, an article the other morning uh, from Patricia Heaton. Uh, Patricia Heaton is an actor. Uh, she was in a, a TV show called 30 Something. She was on Everybody Loves Raymond. Uh, she's in something called The Middle now. And she's been on a journey as well. And she said something in this article which was really just cemented it for me. And she said, when she was a kid, she was watching her parents <clears throat> excuse me, go through paying the bills, sitting down, and doing things that were very actively giving back to her community. And it struck her and it hit the model for what it is that she, is, she has become and the way she's giving uh, to social causes in her life. And it was never a more profound moment of just reading something a couple of days ago that I absolutely said, that's it. That's where I am. That's what my parents gave to me. They live lives of purpose. For my older brother and me, they gave us the opportunity to see what it is that they gave and how they gave, not even mentioning a word about it, but just through their actions, created who I am today. And these are the guys that put father was a commercial artist. Um, uh, they, my parents both moved out from Ohio uh, into California, Northern California, which we'll see in a moment. Uh, my mother was a traditional housewife out of the 50s, and she helped my father in his business uh, while we were all growing and doing things. It's a, another big offline story. Um, but one of the key strokes under my entire life is reinvention, and if I'm trying to keep up and find a meaning and purpose out of my own life, uh, and being able to reinvent myself on a constant basis and keep looking for that just keeps driving me as to what I, what I want to be some, someday. And the other thing that's opened up in the last few years, and I don't know where this light bulb went off, but it was all about dream. <laughs> dreaming, not, not just little dreams, not just the little things, but dreaming really big dreams. And I've got them, and I write them, and I practice them all the time. And I encourage you all to do the same. 
Those dreams all began in this little box up in the, the East San Francisco, East Bay. Uh, this is 15 years to rest, but uh, this is uh, Pittsburgh High School where I went to school and uh, got my music education and got a lot of uh, the building blocks of, of what I am today. And uh, right straight out of there, uh, we hit the road uh, because I chose to follow my brother. I mean, why wouldn't you want to go to a college on a beach? Uh, so I decided to do that, and so I went to UC Santa Barbara and spent uh, a couple of formative years there. Um, what was going on at that time was a little bit different than uh, what happened over the last weekend, but um, actually that Bank of America is right down the block from where all that uh, unfortunate stuff happened this last week. But that was a community that I grew up in for three years and really came uh, you know, to some definite decisions about where I was and what I was going to do. KCSBFM in Santa Barbara, which is uh, still going strong, um, was where I lived rather than just uh, played radio and got into the promotions business. But that wasn't it. Uh, I decided that I was going to actually get out. I was, I was supposed to be the doctor in the family. Uh, there wasn't one. My parents kept looking around. They said, oh, okay, let's just take it for what it is. Um, and I went in and immediately hit rock bottom, uh, that wasn't what I wanted to do, and that radio station actually turned out to be the savior of where I turned to, uh, to go. So I went another few miles down to Los Angeles uh, as we follow this uh, California road, and uh, I went into Los Angeles, I was uh, beckoned by a career in the music business, and it took me to a number of places, it took me to my first real sales training, it took me to uh, rock night clubs, it took me on the road, it took me to all sorts of places, uh, from the Whiskey and the Roxy and Sunset Boulevard and all that stuff happening in the 70s, 80s, through the mid-90s. It put me in the company of various groups that I worked with along the way. These are just a few of them. Um, Jerry Lee Lewis and Chubby Checker and Julian Lennon and the Air Supply, Melissa Etheridge, Rick Springfield, just a few you know, along the way. Big festivals that happened in Southern California. Um, and a couple of gold records and more nightclubs and more exposure along the way. And um, i got to tell you, I just burned out. It's after 25 years of that, it just came to a place where um, it just no longer meant anything more. My passion was gone for it. And I went looking for what that next thing was. And a friend of mine turned to me and said, hmm, I'm in a business that's uh, approaching 10 years old, and we're looking to reinvent ourselves as well. And the skills that you have just might be right for us and for what we're looking to do. And I went to work for these guys at California Pizza Kitchen in their management program for four and a half years. Customer service skills, sales skills, learn to cook, um, along some formulas, stuff that I still use today. And um, got into a program where I was advancing up the ladder into the management program. And uh, there was a moment when they were short of managers back in Northern California. Where did I come from? And I turned to Debbie one day and I said, uh, email just came out that uh, said, anybody want to go to uh, Northern California and uh, help us open new restaurants up there? And two hands went up, hers and mine. And uh, off we went. There's a few more hundred miles. Uh, and this became a, a great opportunity for us. We lived and worked around San Francisco. We actually had a house in Pacifica. Uh, which was uh, actually pretty terrific, and uh, we are um, getting into a place where uh, we were comfortable, we had been there for five, six, seven years, and that turned out to not be what I wanted to do and where I wanted to be in my life is managing restaurants for the rest of, of my time. Uh, so it's time to reinvent again. Uh, you know, what was missing? What was the missing components? Where was my passion not in line with, with what it is that I wanted to do? And I, and I found it back uh, in the concert business and the production business uh, and worked for this great company that I thought was going to be the last company I would ever work for uh, called ABW Tel Aviv and it still exists, a billion dollar company, a global company. And because uh, they took care of me really well and I really gave it back to them. And four and a half years into that, they said, we're closing our San Francisco branch. How many of you have had that happen somewhere in your life? Um, so actually, that was the birth with Debbie's blessing 
uh, of Rick Bloom Audio Visual, which is uh, celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. Uh, and it's my company. It always has me invested in it. I took the extra step of, step of becoming a certified technology specialist a year and a half ago, which is a rigorous program of knowing even the biggest and the best about uh, technology and the stuff that we do in the meetings and live events world. And that has taken me further and further and further. Um, here, was, here was a house in the beautiful springtime of San Francisco that, uh, <laughs> that we loved. Uh, it was uh, Debbie's dream house uh, forever. And uh, so we're tooling along and having a great time up there. We came down to Ventura for a visit during uh, the holiday of 2006, I think it was. And this little one, who was 18 months old at the time, uh, who now lives just a couple of miles from us, um, gave us a tearjerker and essentially said, you're coming down here to live with me. <laughs> so what we did is we sped it all down, we reinvented all of our plans and everything that we were working for, we came back down here to Ventura, and here we are, and that was 2007. Uh, getting into the city limits was, uh, was a wonderful thing. Uh, the the, the 18-month-old is now the big one on the left. Uh, she's now nine. Uh, her little sister, who wasn't even around at that point, is just going to turn seven this year. Um, we now have all of our kids back in California. Uh, my daughter and her husband moved uh, back to California. And that's uh, little Rowan uh, Edward Beely, who is about to turn two in September. Um, so if you talk about purpose in life, uh, those are the ones. And that's, that's the, the piece that gets it for me. Uh, reinventing is, uh, like I said, a big, a big piece of all of this. Uh, we are getting to the place where uh, it's time to keep thinking about what we're doing, about what I'm doing, uh, about giving back. Um, not that I've certainly run my course or run my time, but this is who I am, and I've really discovered that I'm all about a life of service. And how can I be of service to you? Uh, how can I continue to give to my community? How can I give to those little ones uh, and build a legacy for them somewhere along the way? Uh, Debbie and I, as you know, are partners in Miriam International, and that's giving us a whole life uh, and opening up doors that we never thought that we'd ever see uh, in our lifetime. So many relationships that are so key and so great for us. Uh, that uh, we really feel blessed to be in that particular family too. And uh, my audiovisual business thrives and I have uh, some opportunities for you that I'll, uh, that I'll talk about. Uh, I, I offer a, uh, a business package which really only has another month to go because it's just May and June uh, for you to be able to build your business through some uh, if it's something that's for you, for your website, or for uh, recording some testimonials on video cameras, uh, for you to be able to take that in some very strategically priced uh, programs. I have some uh, pieces if you like that. Um, and if you're really interested in it, you can please give me your business card, and uh, we can have a conversation sometime in the next week to try to get that going and get that planned for you uh, as you'd like to. We can discuss different strategies for that. But uh, that's pretty much my journey. Uh, that's uh, many decades, um, all in just a couple of minutes. Uh, again, about reinvention, about my purpose, and about dreaming, dreaming really, really big stuff. And it puts such a smile on my face when I know what's, what's coming down the pipe. And service. And uh, that's, that's what I really hope to just give and give and give to each and every one of you. Thank you. Any questions? What is 26? Uh, <laughs> glad you asked. You have time? Yes. Um, 26 is uh, the last number of AC. It means thank you. Uh, but in a little bit of code, and if I may put in a little bit of a plug, um, I have a, Debbie and I both actually have a speaking and presentation mentor by the name of Maurice Domino. Maurice Domino, uh, M-A-U-R-I-C-D-I, capital M-I-N-O, MauriceDomino.com. 
Uh, Maurice is a Toastmaster, TEDx speaker, uh, trainer who goes around the country doing seminars and teaching people his template of how to deliver the presentation and the message that's buried inside your heart. He forbids people to go to their grave with your message stuck inside you. And he works through this template to give it out. And the very last thing that you do in a presentation is actually it's a 26 point template. And the last thing is thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. Nice.